everybody, this is Sunlast Studio and we're officially live. And uh, hey, oh my gosh, hello, Lost Fog, Lost, sorry, Owl of the Fog. <laughs> I'm so used to Guru of the Lost Fog, it's ridiculous. Uh, Owl of the Fog, I need to get used to that username. It's cute. I like owls, I'm a big fan. Um, the one, oh, the one art piece of the Dragon Destroyer upon the nighttime sky just gave me an idea I could add to the game. Ooh, that sounds exciting. Just wrote it down in my Chromebook so I wouldn't forget. Oh, that's very exciting. You seem to have a lot of news, a lot of breakthroughs lately when it comes to your game. I need to actually orient this light a little bit better so we can kind of see this. <laughs> um, although... I need to kind of adjust the lighting because I have a new camera set up, but it's a very, um, it's, uh, I think it's a much, much better setup. Uh, so I now have a chest cam. I think that it might be easier if I kind of slightly orient it to the left a little bit. That way, that way I can hold my palette with my right or with my left. Maybe if I move it over to the right a little bit. Yeah. Okay. So if I hold my palette with my left and I move the camera to the right side, and that makes it so that when I kind of like come in, you can see the canvas a little bit better. You can hopefully see the details a little better. I'm just going to have to move this, probably this chest plate, a little slightly more to the right side. That way, we get a really good look at everything. Yeah, I think that'll be really good. Now I just gotta move this light back just a bit. Hopefully we can still kind of see. Let's, uh, there we go, okay. Okay, much better. <laughs> um, that one just happened though. Ooh. Nice. All right, that's really good. Uh, so yeah, I mean, uh, Owl of the Fog just happened, or or your new um, Dragon Destroyer of the Nighttime Sky. What what is that one? The one art piece of the Dragon Destroyer upon the Nighttime Sky. That sounds really cool, but I don't know what that is. Yeah, that sounds awesome though. I like keep having to re like reread that because I don't know what that is. Um, that's exciting. Yes. Okay. So we have our like we have our um, colors here. So what you've been up to lately? You've been working on your your game and your story and all your ideas. Oh. Okay. Looks like. Oh. Okay. Something dropped and I was worried for a second that like the cord came out of the camera and I was like freaking out for a second. Internal panic. <laughs> Um, so I need to kind of get used to this whole setup. I now have a camera right on my chest, um, which actually helps us with our view uh, quite a bit. And I thought, I thought getting rid of the head cam, um, it was something that I thought that I wanted, but the head cam, um, honestly, it's not the first thing that I wanted. The first thing I wanted was to have like a nice chest cam with like a, a strap that goes right on my torso. And I could never seem to get a hold of one, but I recently found one for sale and I got it for $10. So I thought, you know what, this is actually definitely something that I should have been doing for a long time now, you know what I mean? So here we are making it happen um yeah so what you been up to owl owl give it to me straight owl <laughs> oh my goodness so that's really awesome that you have that news I need to like really seriously orient this quite a bit more this direction. Oh, I have an idea. There's like adjustable pulley straps here. Um, so here's my idea. 
if I lengthen this strap, then we can tighten this strap. And in doing that, oh my gosh, in doing that we snap the strap and destroy the, the entire setup. I'm just kidding. Um, then I should be able to actually move it to my right side a little bit more. Um, yeah, so I gave the setup a little bit of a test, but honestly, it's clearly not enough of a test. But I do think that this is actually a lot better. There we go. That way we can actually see everything that's going on much better. Much better. I keep looking over at the um, OBS screen just to see, just to make sure. Everything is as it should be. Oh, wow. There we go. Huh. Oh my gosh. Uh, oh, oh. You made it in the past and posted it on a server a while back. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Dark Matter Deity, huh? Anyway, the Ice Dragon is jaw dropping majestic. Oh my gosh, you're so sweet. In other news, taking a quick break from the game due to certain mouse acting up a certain mouse. Oh no. Well that's okay. I mean sometimes we gotta take breaks. I mean for instance yesterday I didn't stream because things just didn't align quite right and um, honestly it just didn't work out. I couldn't stream yesterday due to um, personal reasons but uh, I had the setup and something happened last minute and it was uh, kind of it kind of threw off my entire night, but that's all right. You know, things happen, right? All good. Uh, hey there, looking great. The metal print we got from you looks rad. Yay! Oh my gosh, we're so happy to hear about that. Wonderful. If I can just center my thumbs up in the camera that I have newly, <laughs> newly adjusted to me. Very, very cool. I'm so glad that I got there safely. I of course marked the box fragile even though I pack it pretty good like it um, should be should be alright should be like kind of padded in there nice and nice and secure but I just mark everything fragile just in case all of my boxes you never know um, but I'm so glad and did you see in the little baggie there there's the um, there's the little um, screws and the shock absorbers that you can uh, put into the wall. It's a French cleat mount. And um, also, your fun little uh, ornament too should be in there. I'm so, so glad that it showed up. Um, awesome. FedEx. Ugh. Ugh. Oh my gosh. So I ordered a new one. It's supposed to arrive Friday. Nope. In transit currently. Oh my gosh. So it's FedEx that's keeping you from order a new one and FedEx is dropping the ball. Now let me tell you, I actually have a, uh, a tough time with FedEx myself. Um, it's so funny too because people will swear by UPS and FedEx, but the best, the best results I get from literally just from USPS. I, I, I kid you not, USPS doesn't let me down nearly as much as those other companies. And um, I just kind of exclusively ship through them now. I used to go through UPS, but UPS has honestly caused me so much grief. And um, I ended up having to pay a lot more and also, they wouldn't insure certain packages, and it was just a pain in the pain in the butt. Oh my gosh, USPS is awesome, totally. Yep, it's all there. It's awesome. Thanks, thank you so much, Big Smoko. You're so supportive, and I adore you, and you're wonderful. It seriously means a lot to me that you ordered like from my shop. I really don't get a lot of traffic on there, and honestly. Um, people are definitely more interested in the fan-made stuff that I used to make, um, which I do intend to kind of get back into, but I need a break from that, and so I've been taking one, um, but I can't, like, put it on Etsy anymore. But, like, someone reached out to me today in hopes that they could get, like, you know, some, some more of my fan-made keychains, and I'm like, I'm just like, I'm... 
<laughs> I don't know what to say, man. Like, like I keep it professional, and but I have that Discord server that's kind of the backup. But you know, right now I just don't have anything going on the uh, fan made stuff, and you know, my my dragon art it really doesn't get as much love and attention. So, um, so you coming over to support me and everything like that, that just seriously means a lot to me. I just, yeah, I just, uh, I have a passion for the dragons and I just don't think that, <laughs> I just don't think that the dragons and the fantasy art are really as, like, you know, they're not as supported as the fan art stuff. But it's where my heart is. And it's what I need to seriously be doing. Like, like, let's be honest. It's, um, it's what I should be doing. Oh my! Oh. Aw, oh, husband Bundo sent me a kissy emoji. <laughs> He's at work right now. <laughs> Uh, USPS is awesome, I agree. I remember back in middle and high school, we students used to wave at the driver. She was kind enough to give uh, oh, a sweet to each one of us just because. That is so, so wonderful. That is nice. Yeah, are you, are USPS people around here, like, I don't have any, any of that. Like, when I was shipping tons and tons of things from on Etsy. I was getting a lot of uh, traffic on my Etsy for a while. I was shipping a lot of outbound packages and they picked up a lot of stuff from me, like, you know, just about 10 items daily. And, and mind you, these are small items though, so they're not like, it's not like I'm selling these like $50 prints like 10 of them daily that's like ridiculous that's a lot <laughs> but um however I do uh I do know that they would come to pick up my packages all the time and it's like holy schmoly I would fill up the <laughs> outbound box with a bunch of packages like every single day and it's like nobody ever complains like nothing like you know, they're, they're just awesome. So sometimes I would like leave like a couple bills in with like my mailbox, so the lock box. I would leave that and I would leave like a nice note for them. And um, when they would open it up and they would deliver packages, I would have like, you know, just some little nice notes and just say thank you so much for all that you do. And then sometimes I'd leave money. And one of my postal dudes, um, his name was Mike, I believe. He left a nice note back and he said, uh, I'm glad that your business is booming. And he said, um, we appreciate you. I don't remember what he said in the note, but it was just so nice to see that. And then I put it in my wallet for a long time because it just reminded me that, you know, like, like they didn't even complain. They work hard and like, not that they really could complain, I guess, <laughs> or at least I wouldn't hear about it, but like, I don't know, it was just nice. They're just, they're just nice folks. And, um, you know, the budget cuts and things like that in the kind of recent times just really, really upset me and bothered me. And um, that ended up making me put some more bills in there just in case, you know, like, because they don't, I don't think they earn enough for all that they have to do, all the, all the routes that they have to do and all the mail that they have to deliver. and. Uh, a lot of times they end up like late on their route and um, it's just, you know, it just kind of sucks. <laughs> Here we go. Thinking about the designs of, of The Conjured again. Ah, nice. You've got your, um, oh, you've got your, uh, creativity thinking cap on, don't ya? That's really awesome. That is super duper awesome. You know what? For my for my fan art shelf, I have like I have things where I like made 
as sort of like little freebie things that I would add into add into orders just because, just as a gift for people who were supportive of my shop. And you know, it occurred to me kind of recently when I was packing Bing Smoko's order that I didn't have anything for those types of situations, especially as like a, a significant type of like a thank you sort of thing, because I really want to be able to do that um, again as I used to. And um, it just really occurred to me that I don't have anything ready for that right now, so I kind of really need to change that. I also think that I need to, oh wow, I need to, I really need to orient the camera so that you guys can really see much, much more, because this is kind of bad. Um, there we go. But yeah, I mean, it just, it, it occurred to me that I didn't have anything ready for situations like that, but I was able to get the order out pretty quick, turn it around fast. So, that's cool. That was really awesome. Yes. Boy, it's pretty warm in here, which is surprising because it's kind of cold outside. Um. I gave my little chickies some heating lamps, so they're living outside now. They have their um, their coop that I have set up for them. And then I also uh, put their, their old little cage, like I kind of added it to the coop. Not inside the coop, but as an outside attachment, so it adds more space to the coop. And, um, they sleep in that. It's like a little annex where they can like kind of roost. And um, I set it up with some heating lights tonight because it's gonna get like down to 50 degrees, which I know that's not cold for a lot of people, but it's cold for here. <laughs> like it's just not normal. Um, so, so yeah, I got them all set up with their nice little heating lamp, which is wonderful, great, and awesome. And that'll keep them warm. If I could, I would cry from the sheer amount of ideas for those regarding the conjured designs, or the ones Greg has, taking inspiration from both the Unknown from Pokemon as well as the numbers from Yu-Gi-Oh! Zexel. Oh! I think I know what you're talking about. The the numbers from Yu-Gi-Oh! Zexel, that's kind of like they're kinda of like runes, right? Like they're they're like um oh what's that word? Hieroglyphs. Is that right? Kinda of like hieroglyphs. yesterday I wanted to stream and then I couldn't or like I could I technically could have I was all set up for it but um man just, just something kind of personal just like really really hit me that night and yesterday and I just I was really bugged <laughs> and I just couldn't do anything you know like I just felt like crap <laughs> I just felt like crap um, but I'm doing much, much better today. Much better today. Oh my gosh. Um, which is awesome. I'm really good. I'm really glad to be back into the painting. 
And also, I'm really glad to have this um, this little chest chest thing that I have going on now because um, seriously, like that was kind of a major issue. Like the the head strap was difficult because getting the right point of view was significantly harder. And if something happened to like snag on my like the cord that I'm using, if something happened to snag on that, um, it would like snag my entire head and it was like the most annoying thing. <laughs> it was so frustrating. I hated it. So I'm super glad that I have like I now have something that doesn't do that to me. They're the sweetest babies. I would pay to watch a live stream of those chickens. Ooh, aw. You know, they are so wonderful. I was actually thinking of doing kind of like, um, I want to get more videos of them and stuff and like maybe have them as break screens as well as uh, the Peko and stuff like that. Like I have a bunch of footage of my birds and now I have Borbs in addition to burbs so <laughs> so it's nice um yeah so they're they're like super sweet they're such sweet girls oh my gosh they're like dogs uh they are totally like dogs there it goes goodbye painting <laughs> ruin the painting <laughs> <laughs> I love it, yes. Oh man. Alright, so let's see. Well, kind of. The numbers are painted on the number monsters in their artworks. Number 39, Utopia, is a great example. Mmm. Number 39, Utopia. You know what? I don't know anything about Yu Gi Oh! But I wish that I did. I. You know, I wish I could, like, be up with the times because I feel like, oh, man. I feel so out of touch with these types of things, you know what I mean? I'm, like, so out of touch. Um, number 39, Utopia. That doesn't ring, like, literally any bells, which is so weird. Um, lightning theme, yay! <laughs> awesome. I've been waiting ages to use that. I hope it was good. I hope you really enjoyed that because um, I really like, I really had such a good time making it. I literally green screened. I have, it wasn't even a green screen. It was like a green mat, but same idea. I like took a green silicone mat and I just went ham with it. You know, I just, I did the, did the black paint. I was like, <laughs> it was so much fun to make. Um, <laughs> All right, so let's see. I've been waiting ages to use that. I'll upload a picture to the server. Ooh, that'd be great. I will have to stop the hand cam for just a moment. I'm sure you won't mind. But I'm gonna go ahead and take a look. I'm sure you guys like looking at my arm in the way. Um, let's go ahead and check it out. Okay. Oh, that's happened. My husband gives me a nice little emoji and I'm gonna give him nice little emojis back. There. There, there we go. There we go. Okay, alright. Let's see here. A picture upload. Oh, I see what you're saying. Okay. Let me um, try to bring this to my chest. I haven't done this before with the, um, I don't know if it'll even like zoom in right or proper, but like kinda, after there it is. Like I see it, I see the thing on his shoulder plate. Okay, that's pretty cool. That looks really neat. I always do like those types of designs. There's Arca, Arca's typing. AKA Leon Noel. It's your boy Leon. <laughs> nice, nice. Okay, let's see what we got here. Um, just uploaded it to Visual Arts. I 
think that's what I just saw. Yep. Perfect. All right. So. Yep. So we took a look at that and um, it looks pretty cool. I like the red on his shoulder there. So is that the kind of um, symbols that you're talking about? Like that's kind of what it looks like. It looks like that's what you're talking about. There we are. Let's go ahead and do some more on this. Kind of like desaturate it kind of. You know? Yeah, okay, here we go. I really think that I should be paying attention to, like, the claws and, like, how the... Yeah. I don't know what I'm saying, but <laughs> I feel like I should be paying attention to, like, the light and how it interacts with even, like, the, the background types of things over here. Like that. Oh, oh, sorry for shouting. Shouting! Yes! <laughs> Shopping? What do you mean? <laughs> You're all good. What happened? What do you mean? <laughs> I don't think there was any shouting. I think you're all good. All, all, all good. Uh, except I will design very different looking monsters. Uh, yes, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, just taking inspiration from something doesn't mean that you're, you know, that you're ripping it off. I mean, some people kind of don't really have any creative, you know, juices in them, so they just kind of rip things off, but I don't take you as that type of person. Owl, I think that you're, you're probably, you're very creative when it comes to writing that I just, that doesn't even cross my mind. You know what I mean? You're fantastic at the writing piece. Honestly, I'm like, like amazed by it. I'm not, I've never really been good at that type of thing. I'm not really good at the, the creative writing. It's never really been my forte. Just, uh, just ask for Sparrow. Thanks, Moko. Ask for Sparrow about Cat Channel. <laughs> if you don't know about Cat Channel. He might remember. I don't know if he will remember. He may not. It would be pretty funny if he did, though. Say that would be kind of funny. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's hot! Hey, how's it going? Uh, I'm in stream right now. I'll be back soon. Lurking right now. Lurk, enjoy your lurk. Thanks so much for being here and chilling and hanging out whilst I paint. Thank you very, very much. It's good to see ya. It's good to see ya. Hope everything's been well on your end. Been busy myself in a good way. I've been busy in a good way. I just like Yeah. I just like kinda use like some specific highlights and in these types of areas, then we can kind of have like this this background foot kind of stick out a little bit more and be a little less uh a little less like an ominous shadow and a little bit more like an actual Claw of sorts, you know what I mean? Like an actual 
Is something actually there? Okay, so let's kind of like align that a little bit with like a with a highlight. tonight but wanted to at least have your stream on in the background also I barely remember what cat channel is uh, just that it's a phrase that I recognize <laughs> good it's better off that way let's just say my creative writing kind of sucks uh, <laughs> hilarious oh gosh um, I hope you have a wonderful night owl thank you so much for tuning in and for hanging around and being here you're super awesome. I really love to catch up with you on all of your creative uh, endeavors with your game and all of your writing and stuff. It's just super awesome. You have a lot of really cool ideas. Seriously awesome. Oh, hey, I do have something that I kind of want to show off. I brought it in with me because it just happens to, you know, be inside the house. I brought it in because I had some, like, really crazy wind. Uh, today it was like super windy, so I brought everything inside. Um, but over the past few days, oh my gosh, happy birthday once again! Yes, this is the eleventh uh, birthday that I've had this year. <laughs> thank you so much. <clears throat> thank you so much, Smoke and Ace. You were awesome. You're so funny. <laughs> Um, yeah, I'm catching on to the patterns finally since you uh, since you mentioned it last time. Thank you so much. You are so sweet, Smokin' Ace. Uh, I like excavated a bunch of clay from my backyard and like we actually have like an entire layer of the earth under our house that's just clay. So, so it's really cool. And right now I am pulling something that I kind of like put together with the clay that I was just like, you know, um, I'm just going to construct a thing, uh, with this and it's like hard, dude. Like I made these like little pinch pot things and so this is just like kind of a test and, uh, it was like not even like cured or like it, the clay's not really refined or worked into anything. Um, I literally just kind of played with it and it's hard it is so it dried so hard I don't know like I've never found like natural clay that is this like you know sturdy in my entire life and I didn't even realize we're just sitting on a whole bunch of it it's kind of wacky it's so like and it's so hard it dried like like hard dude like, it's not even falling apart, nothing. And I'm working on a thing for my husband, which um, I'll have to show you guys later. It's kind of in the, it's kind of in like the middle of like uh, being worked on. So it kind of looks like unfinished, but I would really love to show you what I'm working on for him. It's from the dried clay, and there's so much stuff I want to make with it, actually. It's just really amazing, because you can just air dry it, and then you can, like, put some layers of varnish on it, and then you can, you can paint it, and you can turn it into whatever you want. It's great. I love it. So nice. I have such a good time. Smoke and Ace, I hope you're having a good time. Hope you've had an awesome Easter. Uh, I don't know if you like celebrate Easter or do anything really, but I hope that it's been a good time for you anyways. Um, also, 420, what? Uh, it's not 420 anymore, but just saying, you know, I haven't streamed since then, so just, uh, just doing little updates, I guess. They haven't really been on. Yesterday, I wanted to get on stream. But I didn't, because things happen, you know, you know how it is. So I'm just mixing up some more paints. I kind of want to make this a little bit more pale. Um, I think it should be more pale. 
uh, let's just kind of actually let's just kind of everything is so dry. The canvas, it just stays dry forever. I don't know what's going on. I guess I do know what's going on. This is Arizona, and everything is always dry. <laughs> Precipitation? What's that? Pretty much. That's pretty much how it goes here. And lazily. I don't know how well you guys can see that. I really have to get in there with my chest camera. Did anybody see my going live notification? Chest cam, it's not what you think. <laughs> I had to, you know, because, like, it is a chest cam, but I didn't want anyone to think, you know, um... You know the, the the other kind of chest cam. You know the the, the one that uh, a lot of the a lot of the women streamers use. <laughs> that ain't me. <laughs> oh no, not here. Not here, not now, not ever, not here. I have a painting channel, but you know what? It would be really cool if I could do like um like kind of some craft streams too, things that I'd be doing anyways, you know what I mean? It would be funny. <laughs> Bring it in those viewers. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> Chest cam. That's, that's, uh, that's the usual for Twitch. This is actually kind of like, for me, I can get in and it's a better angle. I think that I kind of want to adjust the camera strap again though. Like I kind of want to bring it in to the side a bit more. And uh, to do that, I would definitely have to move this strap so that there's like, probably less space. Hold on, you guys. I'm going to make it so that this chest strap can be over a little bit further. And this is definitely going to take some uh, take some skill while I've got this whole uh, palette right up next to me, hoping that the palette doesn't flip over and paint me <laughs> in my dress. That would suck. That would really suck. Let's, let's not jinx it though, you know what I mean? Okay, very, very carefully, very, very carefully, let's adjust this. It's worth it. It's worth the risk. Uh, I'll just keep telling myself that. If I can just do that. I think that'll, I think that'll be better. Not quite there yet, actually. This is the really challenging part, you guys. I'm sorry that you have to witness this. Okay. I think that I got it at a better angle, but I'm not really positive. I guess we'll have to just find out. Maybe not. You know what? I'm gonna take off the palette. Ugh. Okay. Now we we'll have a hands free and we can actually do this thing. Okay. Oh yeah, I see where it goes here. You guys have to watch all of the fiddling around with the camera. That's super fun, I'm sure. I'm sure that's a fun time. Hmm. 
Well, I want this to be like longer while this is shorter. That should actually do, okay, there we go. I think that should do much better. All right. So now I just have to kind of fix this up. You can see my entire setup right here. <laughs> my chair, my paint palettes, everything with paint all over it. <laughs> Nothing is safe from the paint, let me tell you. Even my phone has paint on it. It's just normal. <laughs> oh my gosh, Ophelix Mortem. Thank you so much for the raid. You are wonderful. I hope you're all having a wonderful evening. I just uh, kind of fixed up my camera so that I can get in here and, and we can actually see the painting a little bit better as I work on it. Harvely, harv I'm just going to call you Harv, Harvering Live. Um, prepare to meet some new friends. Oh my gosh, you guys are amazing. <laughs> hello, hello everybody. Oh my gosh, the, is, that a, is that a hot dog? Oh my gosh, that's great. I love that. The Classy Ferret. Oh my gosh, thank you so much for the follows. The Classy Ferret, you're so sweet. Ophelia Mortem. Oh my gosh, you're so sweet. Max Slayer, thank you so much for the follow. You guys are so sweet. It's ridiculous. Oh my gosh, I adore you. So this is what I'm working on right now. Uh, this guy right here. This is um, Tundra's Majesty. That's what I call him. He's, a, he's like the king of the tundra and he just kind of, you know, he just kind of struts around like he owns a place. Probably because he kind of does. I don't know. <laughs> um, heard you're really talented. Oh my gosh, you're so sweet. That painting is super sick. Oh my gosh, you guys are so sweet. It's ridiculous. Uh, Harv, did you do this? Did, did Harv put you up to this? Thank you so much for being here, you guys. You're awesome and amazing. Super sweet. Uh, I don't really know where I'm going tonight with this painting. Usually I kind of have a game plan on like what I'm going to work on, but I'm just kind of winging it today. Uh, <laughs> thank you so, so much for your kind words. You guys are awesome. Seriously. Harp did suggest I read you. Oh my gosh, so sweet. Oh my gosh, holy hell. <laughs> You're so sweet. You guys are awesome. Uh, happy to meet some, uh, meet new talented folks. Oh my gosh, so sweet. You guys are so nice. Thank you so, so much for being here. It means a lot to me. I'm just gonna go ahead and spray everything down, you guys. I live in Arizona, which is a super, super dry place where paint just wants to dry all the time. So we have to spray everything down like 500 times um, a session. <laughs> That's bad. Um, but you know, I actually don't mind too much because I have this really nice spray bottle. It makes things that much easier to work with. I hope you guys are doing great tonight. What did you do on your stream, Ophelix? Um, did you do some super exciting stuff? Did you play something? What you been up to? Ophelix Mortem. I feel like your username is actually really familiar to me. Something, something about that is very, very familiar. There it is. <laughs> um, meet mommy. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh my gosh, I love that emote. What on earth? I That is great. Meet mommy. <laughs> Will do. Oh my gosh, the hot dog with the petting. Oh my gosh, are you kidding me? These are wonderful. I love your emotes. They are great. What the heck? Those are awesome emotes. I love those. Meet mommy. That is really that's hilarious. I love that. What's the story behind that? Behind Meet Mommy. There's gotta be a story, right? I would definitely just imagine, you know? I mean <laughs> these things, they don't come from nowhere. 
Maybe they do, I don't know. Shit. Heck if I know, right? I'm gonna save those fine details for like an actual fine brush instead of just kind of rushing in there with this giant fat uh, filbert. <laughs> That's just bleh. It's for blopping like paint on. <laughs> oh my gosh! She's a hot dog! Hot the dog. If you'd like to see, check her, check out her stuff. You can buy. Oh my gosh, she works hard and is super modest. You're so sweet. Oh my gosh, being smoko. You're shilling me. You are shilling me right now. I adore you. Miss Pink Smoko. You are the sweetest, literally. Oh my gosh. That makes me so happy. You're so sweet. Um, <laughs> I actually have things that I need to list. And I'm also currently working on some new bracelets, you guys. Um, I haven't finished them. They need some resin. But uh, a few of them, uh, one of my paintings, Glimmering Seabed. Uh, I decided to kind of put that into into a bracelet. I haven't finished it though. I don't know how well you can actually see. Hold on. I have to like adjust the camera. Um, but you know what? Better yet, I can probably just show you Glimmering Seabed itself. I have the painting in my possession currently. Currently. But I do need to wipe my hands off. <laughs> I'm shameless and love to be hyped. To be a hype man. You deserve it. You're so sweet. I've never heard the term hype man before, but I like it. I like that a lot. I like it a lot. A uh, Glimmer and Seabed is one of my special paintings that has a day version and a night version. And, um, goodness, I will have to show you. Actually, I'll probably show you after break. Um, since I do kind of have to like go through some things to get to it. I have it up uh, in my little storage closet over here, but um, I kind of am holding too many things at once and I don't want to risk getting paint on stuff. So, uh, so I'll probably take a break later and then we will go searching for it. There it is, the ice, the chill theme. Icy chill theme. I had so much fun making these themes. Thank you so much for using the theme changer, you guys. I have so much fun making the themes. It's like one of my favorite things about streaming is that I can do the channel point thing. Who likes to utilize the channel points? Like, I personally, I personally love the feature and I didn't think I would care too much, but once I figured it out, once I learned about trigger fire in particular, um, that was a game changer for me. Then I became like completely obsessed with channel points and making some really fun rewards. Just super obsessed. Doing this whole finger painting thing over here. Oh boy. So I'm kind of thinking with this, I don't want to go in there and, do we want to add, we do, we want to add scales to this, uh, this dude's arm over here. How are you? <laughs> That's my producer. I'm so obsessed with trigger fire because of you. Oh my gosh, trigger fire is insane. It's so much fun. It's ridiculous. I'm so glad that, um, that I could help you with that because I learned through a YouTube video. Nobody tells me these things, right? And I feel like trigger fire is super underutilized. So, um, super, super awesome. And in my own opinion, it's definitely worth the, um, like I personally, um, I personally, um, what's that, what's that platform? I forget what it's called. Patreon. I personally subscribe to their Patreon. Um, because you do actually get perks. You get... This is excessive, dude. But you get a hundred new uh, slots that you can use for, like, trigger fire triggers. Every month that you're a Patreon subscriber. And uh, I think like the minimum amount is like $1.50 or something. It's not even a lot. 
and, and like literally it's just I haven't even used a hundred triggers but I still am like subscribed to the patreon just because I think it's such a nice tool um, to have like I think a hundred is kind of excessive for every month but dude it's so cool it is so so cool absolutely worth the use it's been so helpful good yes I agree I have so much fun with it like it's it just it's a total game changer whole game changer I've um I never thought I'd really get into the channel points but once I figured that out like once I learned about trigger fire oh my gosh oh my gosh it's such a cool thing Yes, I do. I'm gonna think I'm, I'm just gonna add some some like little shiny scales and like a nice little pattern on them. That way we can that way we can have like this. I don't know how much you can actually really see while I paint. Um, I have to keep checking back because this is the first session that I've ever used the chest cam before. So it's like a very, it's a very new thing to me. I don't really fully, like, like I'm not fully used to it yet. But I definitely will get there, for sure. <laughs> I find that the chest cam though is like a lot more like stable than the head cam. Um, the head cam was kind of difficult. I feel like it would kind of make us a little, a little bit dizzy or a little bit, um, for me anyways, like watching it back, I'd get a little bit like motion sick. And you know what? I am like admittedly, I'm like really, really sensitive to like those types of motion things. But, uh, but I mean still. Um, I just kind of wanted to get rid of at least some of that. I feel like this doesn't quite lead back the way that I want it to. Yeah, it really doesn't. I kind of want to like bury some of the some of the parts in the sky that don't really contribute to. Oh, you know what I mean. Get some vermilion. Hey! Hello! Hi! Hello! <laughs> oh! Oh! Wow! Alrighty! Well, that would definitely mean that it's time for a break! Uh, thanks to GoPro and how it, it, it does just cut everything out, doesn't it? Alright, so I've just kind of put some paint on my palette here. But, um, I think that we should definitely take a quick break so that I can get this all hooked up again. Uh, it shouldn't take me too terribly long. Um, lately it's been connecting kind of snappy, so we'll see. Uh, I'll take a, like, a, a quick minute and a half break, and then we'll see where we go from there. Alright, guys, I'll see you real shortly.
Okay, so Trigger Fire has been kind of slipping up lately. Uh, we, hold on one sec, we've got the, uh, we've got the Ruin the Painting still on. Um, it has really been turning off sources that it's supposed to toggle on and off, which has been unusual, but I think it's since they added the hold feature, and I think the old toggle feature is just not quite working properly. Um, so I do have to probably go in there and change a few things to get it to work right. But, uh, yeah, so at least we have video, right? Technical difficulties are fun. Uh, <laughs> but I'm sure you don't mind watching me ruin the computer because I was pointed at the computer at the time. My gosh. All right, well, we're back and everything's working. Supposed to be, anyway. Seems like it is. That's exciting. All right, so let's get some sky colors in here and try and bury some of this, some of this old nonsense that I have on here. Um, hello, look at you. Hello, hello. Thank you so much for being here. How are you doing this lovely evening, Lemon Fluff? It's good to see ya. Yes, it is. That much, but just a little bit. We're just gonna kind of mute this. Just oh my gosh! There we go. I'm finally streaming. I intended to last night, but I had the big sad. And uh, I had a difficult time actually just streaming. Um, but now I'm back and everything is good and better. And uh, I'm just gonna try to bury some of the clouds and some of the like the lines in the sky that don't really make sense all that much. Some of these, some of these I just kind of need to fix, fix up, and then this as well, because it's too harsh, and then there we go, okay, we're making some progress, I do kind of need to bury some of that as well, uh, small sunlight voice, oh boy, I hope that worked, uh, <laughs> please let me know if it worked. Because now I'm like concerned about trigger fire. I'm gonna actually go check because there's a way that I can check to make sure that it worked. Um, otherwise, you can tell me if it worked. It didn't. Ah. All right, trigger fire. You are being pain in my behind. All right, let's go to audio input capture filters. Um. Some of the older features, so we'll just have to uh, be 
about dozens and try and do some tests and stuff like that. Yeah, I think it's important that we keep that updated, right? It's good to stay up to date. I have to mix up the right color, um, which is kind of difficult because I have to like match the exact color and sometimes that can be challenging. That's definitely a little bit too pink. I need to add a little bit of blue and then a little bit of white. Make it a little bit more pale. And a little bit more violet. Only slightly, only slightly. Just the slightest violet. Super light. And a super pink. Just really, really soft violet that's in there. turned on so I don't even know what <laughs> is coming through when most of the time and I like look at it and it's like super cluttered super cluttered 
Okay, so now let's see. I don't want to use like a brush that that can handle making nice, nice streaks that are like a nice straight line. I wonder if I should use like a wedge shape wedge or if I should use this kind of like smaller filbert. I do really like the little filberts. Um, I have like um definitely have a love for the filbert brushes because those things they just have so much control. I don't know. I really like the shape. They work out really well, usually. Uh, I attempted to go to bed early and it was a total fail, so I'm up for the stream. <laughs> oh, well, thank you so much for being here. I'm so sorry that you couldn't sleep. Yeah, it can be kind of difficult to sleep um, when you're just not ready for it, especially since you're adjusting to some like majorly new things right now, like with your new job, new place. All of that fun stuff. You're just adjusting. Um, and uh, yeah, sleeping is kind of hard to do on command when all those things are going down. Unless you're like uh, keto and you work yourself to the bone. This, uh, I'm gonna switch this filbert out for a different filbert. Sounds crazy, right? Well, I think that the other one is a little bit, the, the bristles are too firm to work with, so uh, I will probably have to throw that into some treatment and try and get the, the bristles to not be so stiff later, and then we'll see. <laughs> I'm trying to flip from days to nights, but my body is like, no. Uh, that could be a solution, working to bone. Right, like, you know, it, it may or may not be more practical, I don't know. Like, you can get yourself overtired, and, uh, you know, I, I don't know how most people feel about that kind of solution, but, you know, it's a thing, and it's there, I guess. Uh, <laughs> you know, depends on who you are. Depends on what you like to do. Nothing wrong with it if that's what you like. But yeah, definitely. Definitely an option. For sure. That'll keep that'll keep people sleeping when you're supposed to sleep, right? Like. Alright, I need some blending. I need to be able to blend. And uh don't like me very much, so we're gonna go ahead and throw some more water on that. Pray to the humidity gods that that uh, this will this will help. <laughs> you know what I mean. Alright. I just want like like this is out of place. This right here is out of place. I need to do something. this up. I actually get to see that a little bit better. Perhaps. Maybe. I don't know. I kind of want to use my ruler, but I don't really have my ruler with me. <laughs> For some reason, I didn't put it back where it belongs, so that'll be a little bit of a challenge, I think. Yes, there we go. It's blending. Thank goodness. Thank you, humidity gods, for answering my prayer. <laughs> yes, here we go. I mean, nights today. I've always been a natural night owl, so why resist? Right? Yeah, I mean, I'm kind of the same way. I'm a total night owl. I want to know that you are too. Like, I don't know. I feel like, um, I 
feel like people who are not night owls have zero understanding that it's just kind of like a natural, like, I don't know, we just, we can adapt to, like, the daytime stuff, but, like, it's a little bit harder on us, I think, and, like, for some reason our brain activity just isn't, like, what we want it to be, or, you know, our functionality, I guess, we're just not as tuned in during the day, even if we can function. Like, for me, I... I don't know, I can't really be dialed in during the day, even if I'm up. Like, I, I don't know. Usually I'm not, I'm not boogieing. I mean, I used to sometimes when I was like completely used to it for years, but... I don't know, even then I still struggled, I guess. I had to be like physically active and moving around for it to do anything for me. Because if I had to go sit in, like, some kind of meeting or something, or sit at school, um, I was never really able to actually function and focus if I'm, like, sitting down and I have to, like, you know, focus up. <laughs> it, it just doesn't work. I don't know. Like, if you're moving around, that's kind of different. It's different. know how much of this you can see. If I like, if I like puff my chest up like this, then you guys can see this better. I want it to stay in the frame. This is my first, this is my first rodeo for, for this cam, not, not for a live stream. I, I've done live streams, but, uh, <laughs> But, I mean, it, it's hard to believe, I know, considering how rusty I am. It's pretty challenging. I'm not talking as much as I probably should be. And, uh, you know, I'm kind of failing with the technical difficulties. Just kind of flopping around like fish out of water. But, uh, but, you know, I'm talking about the chest cam. The chest cam, in particular, is a new thing for me. I bought this. Um, and it just got here like a couple days ago, and now I'm finally using it, and I'm so happy to be using it. It's like really quite nice. I really like the chest cam. It's very cool. <laughs> they get all judgy. Yeah, like the the, the day, daytime people, they do. They judge. They think that it's they think that it's a lack of discipline. I'll tell you, it's not a lack of discipline. It's just your brain just. I don't know, it's nocturnal. We're, some of us, I think, we're kind of just born like that. Maybe a little neurodivergent, I'm not really sure if, um, you know, there's a correlation there, but I, I personally think that there probably is. Um, I do know that there's a correlation between ADHD and being a night owl, and having the offset clock thing, which is definitely a descriptor of me. That is me. I, I am... ADHD and also have that same struggle. Uh, <laughs> it seems to be working well. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, it's different. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah, so the story of that is um, when I moved out here to the Copa, Maricopa, I, um, had to get a job. And I used to be a Starbucks barista, so I went to go buy at Starbucks. And uh, the Starbucks that I used to work at, mind you, was a kiosk. But I was, you know, doing the managerial thing there. And, uh, you know, it was a whole can of worms. Wasn't getting paid for it. So, so that was a whole thing. But anyways, I got away from that. I moved out here and, um, I applied. I went into the this place, this miracle, this Starbucks, which is, uh, you know, I'll, I'll keep my opinions about that place to myself right now. But anyways, um, the lady that was there, she was not having it. She she just worked there. She was just a barista. But you know, 
<laughs> I, you know, asked about applying, and, and um, I can't remember, I think I handed in my application there, and uh, they just kind of shut it down right there and said, oh, well, you worked at a kiosk, and this place has a drive through It's different. I'm like, different how? It's literally a drive through It's not hard to operate a drive through I don't understand what kind of high and mighty, like, who is going to be high and mighty? about working at a freaking Starbucks. Are you kidding me? Like, just, who? <laughs> who who has that kind of mentality? Like, seriously. <laughs> working minimum wage at a, at a coffee shop, and it's like, I had done that for five years, and I just wanted to get in there and, and you know, just be a part of the team, but uh, I got slapped with, it's different in the most backhanded tone I have ever heard in my entire life. <laughs> like straight to my face, like oh my gosh. It was just like, and they were struggling too. They were spilling stuff everywhere and it's like I had so much to say about how that place was run. But I will keep those opinions to myself. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's bad. <laughs> it's so funny. So funny. Night Owl Gang, yucks. Night Owl Gang. That is all of us. I mean, I need to get some more, like, white paint on my palette here, because, like, pretty much everything else is, like, dried up. So funny indeed, yeah. Hilarious. My gosh. That's different. My gosh. Who... Who has that, seriously? Like, who is... That stuck up? that they're working at a place with a drive through Like, are you kidding me? How? That's, that's insulting to me. Like, like you, you think that like me, a grown woman, can't like handle that? I don't know. Easy stuff. It's easy. Obviously, there's going to be, like, hard days, but it's not like, not like I'm incapable, you know what I mean? Like, everybody has hard days. Especially in, like, customer service jobs and things like that. Yeah, that's bound to happen. Hard days. Yeah. But, jeez. Like, that's different. Like, oh my gosh. It's hilarious. So I think that I kind of, last time I kind of was sharpening up some like edges and details over here. This time around I am putting a lot more emphasis and focus on the sky because it just needs some attention and some detail. aquatic ambience for the music because I am pretty chill right now. <laughs> this is like the perfect atmospheric music for especially for these like super fine brush strokes where I have to really kind of concentrate on them. Of course, if they're not like perfectly straight, that's fine. It doesn't really matter all too much. There we go. How's BG? I heard her allergies were bad. Yeah, she's like me. She's been having pretty terrible allergies and she gets a lot of stomach ache like ache aches lately. I'm not sure if she's just expressing that she has them more because she knows what they are or if she's just having them more. I can't really tell. Uh, tonight she's actually sleeping really good. Um, we did our normal bedtime ritual and she went to bed which was good. Just did our brush teeth 
bedtime. She was like super good. And last night she was also super good. Um, she went right to bed. Uh, I think she came out maybe like one time. I don't know. I can't really remember. All my days are blending together. But um, but for the most part, yesterday I remember feeling really relieved because yesterday it was kind of like a, a good day amongst a lot of bad days. Uh, same as tonight. Tonight has been really awesome. Uh, but yeah, she she had been getting up uh, a few nights ago. She got up a few times because her allergies were bugging her kind of bad, um, which I don't blame her because we've been having all this weird weather and with all the things blooming and with the spring being here, like, it's just, it, my allergies have been really bad. Today, surprisingly, not as bad. Um, and same as her, she hasn't had any allergies for, like, not that she's expressed. She didn't express it today. Um, although she has been, like, falling over and stuff a lot, like, she... She's been kind of a little bit more clumsy in her playing, so she'll play hard, and then she says that hurt over, like, everything, everything right now. Like, she will go play, and then she'll, like, uh, stub her toe, or she'll, like, I don't know, she's just, she plays really hard, and it's kind of hard to watch for me because she'll play so clumsy, and I have to tell her to not play so clumsy. Like, today she was running around in our yard in the spot that we dug up and uh, it's very uneven ground and a lot of it is hard clay and she just keeps running around in there and like stumbling and I have to tell her walk carefully walk slowly and she probably fell on that thing twice today um, but she hasn't really been hurt or anything like she shouldn't have any like bruises or scrapes or anything from that but um, but oh my gosh, like it just makes me panic inside. <laughs> oh, being smoko. Hey there, I'm gonna head to bed in a minute. The painting looks amazing. Have a good night. Oh, thank you so much for being here, being smoko. Thank you so much for tuning in and being here and being super supportive as you always are. And for being a total shill for me, that like seriously made my night. I appreciate you so much. You're so sweet. Um, have a super good night and get some good rest. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah, BG, she's, she's been, she's been good. She's been kind of grumpy lately and, uh, moody and kind of defiant, which I'm not really sure. Like, I, I chalk it up to her as just being poor. You know, she, I feel, I feel that she behaves like an ordinary four-year-old. That's that's the way that I see it personally. Um, I feel like that's expected, and uh, so I don't really get too upset about it. If that makes sense. Um, but yeah, she's been pretty moody lately, which. Um, well, today she, she did a lot better because she had her belly ache and then she went to the bathroom and took care of that and uh, she then she was doing better for like the rest of the day. Which was nice. The thing is though, like she's afraid of the chickens. She's afraid of animals in general. Which is kind of strange to me because I never, like, I never personally was. Uh, I guess I was afraid of, like, Sharpays because Sharpays, like, I remember we went to this dude's house when I was, um, a kid and, uh, like, my parents brought me to this dude's house, uh, and he had a Sharpay and I was, like, maybe two, I think. I don't know, and the Sharpay, like, ran into me and, like, bulldozed me, and I was, like, a baby, and I couldn't really, I don't know, like, I couldn't, the Sharpay was big, and it would, like, trample me, and it was, like, playing with me, but I, my parents weren't paying any attention to me, and uh, I remember crying, and that's all I remember, but I'm not afraid of Sharpays anymore or anything like that, but, like, there was a time where I was, like, afraid of them. Um... But 
for Robin, she's just, she's not, I don't know, she's kind of afraid of, like, all animals now. She wasn't when she was a baby, really, but I think that some of it has to do with, like, like, I asked her and she responded, like, like, she knew exactly what I was talking about and she thought it was kind of funny and quirky, but, um, she has this movie, it's a Pokemon movie. It's, a. Uh, it's a Pokemon movie called Destiny Deoxys, and there's a main character in the movie named Tori who is afraid of the Pokemon. Like, he's, he's like afraid of Pokemon, like, terrified, won't touch them, won't let them touch him, and uh, he's like scared of them, but he makes friends with the Pokemon uh, at the end of the movie, and he starts to come around and actually warm up to them, but like for the rest of the movie, he's like afraid of them, and the Pokemon are like animals, right? She, for the longest time, has been obsessed with that movie. Like, she watched it back, back, back. She, she asked for it on at night, like for some time. She memorized the, the music. She sang the songs in it. Uh, she loves that movie, and she likes the character Tori a lot. And uh, she, like, I just kind of started to draw some similarities, and I said, "Are you afraid of? Are you afraid of animals? Like Tori's afraid of Pokemon?" And she laughs, and she goes, hey, "Yes." Like I'm just like, Robin, is this a personality thing for you? Like, are you trying to emulate basically what Tori is doing? So I'm just kind of wondering if it has something to do with the influence of that movie. Um, because it, I don't understand where else it would have come from. It doesn't really make any sense to me. Uh, what is a Sharpay? Uh, Sharpays are... Sharpays are uh, like a wrinkly dog. It's, it's like a bigger version of a pug. It's like a super wrinkly, kind of small dog. Um, usually they're brown, I think, and uh, they just have the most wrinkly faces ever. Uh, like wrinkles and folds on their face that cover their eyes. Like, they look so funny <laughs> and uh, comical. But yeah, this guy had a Sharpay, and uh, I, was, I was so scared. I was so scared of the Sharpay. I was, I was scared of, yeah, I was scared of them because of that whole incident, but... You know, Robin didn't really have an incident like that, so... Well, no. Now, now that's kind of wrong because uh, we had gone over to Jamie's house and he had that, he had that big dog, Duke. And uh, I would hold Robin and, and Duke would try to jump up and try to get to Robin. And I'm not sure, like I can't remember off the top of my head, but... Um, he might have like nicked her with like, nails or scratched her or something. I'm not really sure. I don't remember anything happening like so I don't know. I'm not really sure. I do know that he jumped up and tried to get to her a lot and it's been a very long time since that happened. But she could be like me and just remembering that. I'm not really sure. We haven't been over there in a very long time. I can't, I cannot stand, I can't stand Duke <laughs> around my daughter. Like seriously, after like him trying to jump up and well, he's hard to, he's difficult to, um, to handle. So I'm guessing that may have something to do with it. I'm not sure. But she, she's afraid, she's afraid of cats too. She's afraid of all of the animals, the chickens. They haven't even, they haven't done anything to make her worried or scared. You know what I mean? Like, it doesn't really make much sense. To me. But, you know. It would be nice to know what's like in her head, like what, what she's kind of, it'd be good if I could like, dive inside her head, but she has been getting really good at communicating and telling me these types of things. So lately I've been able to get away with asking her certain questions and be able to get answers from her. And uh, she's pretty good at talking, so she's pretty, pretty good at communicating what she's feeling and what she thinks and what she sees. And uh, all of those things, which has been supremely helpful. Very, very helpful. 
yeah, very... The animals are pretty unpredictable. Oh, and the chickens, too, they're kind of crazy. Like, they will, like, fly around and, and like, flock together and stuff. But, yeah, they're, they're really sweet little chickies, though. They're not... She loves the... She loves the animals from afar. She, uh, she's just scared to get close. She'll, she'll keep her distance, but she likes the chickens. She'll watch them and she'll go, chickies! And it's so cute when she does it. It's so cute. Oh my gosh. Oh, oh my daughter is so sweet. Been good. She's been doing well today. Which is good. thoughts, head empty. rusty at painting. I gotta stay on top of it, man. It's just... Uh, it's ridiculous. I gotta stay on top of it. helpful for making it look a little bit more dimensional. I do also kind of work, want to work on his teeth a little bit. We'll be the, the, the dragon dentist over here. So we don't need the whole things to be like white. That's the only thing. It's like, that's kind of a mistake right there. I don't know how much you can actually see. Let's actually get in there with the um, camera. like white highlights sure like we can do that but like for the entire tooth to be white doesn't make too much sense because there's definitely a shadow that should be cast on the tooth Soundtrack. Really nice. 
This is Kirby. I think this one was from Triple Deluxe, but I'm not really positive. All that tartar build up, right? Yeah. Gotta do the uh, the dragon dentist. Yeah. He's been binging on the sweets too much. <laughs> Sounds like me. Sounds like me. Alright, so we can get a few like little white. Little white glistening parts in here, but we can't. We can't like make the whole entire thing look. water on the canvas there. I don't know how that happened. Oh well. I'm surprised there isn't an award show for games. There kind of is. There's the, well, I guess that's kind of more like, they have that game of the year thing. I don't know if that's like actually an event though. I'm, I'm too like out of touch for this sort of thing, so I can't really speak on it. But uh, there's like Game of the Year awards, I think. And um, yeah, and then I think uh, there's also like E3 usually, but I think the E3 this year was canceled, uh, which sucks. But E3 was kind of more of like a show or like an event where like big game companies would like rally together and like have a, a basically a big massive show uh, where they would like talk about the things that they've been working on and their big projects and the things that um, that they want to display or basically show that they've been working on for the year. It's a, uh, usually it's a really huge event. People go in person to go see it and um, that's really cool. Yeah. I mean, yeah, like, like, games, video games are, like, um, a masterful work of art. <laughs> like, you know, there's so many people that work on them, and there's so much that goes into them that isn't even just, like, like, it's not even just, like, the gameplay, but, like, there's so much more that goes into video games. There's, like, so much art and so much beautiful music and... Just, uh, everything is just so artfully designed that it's, like, kind of surprising that it's not really acknowledged. Um, I think that games have definitely become a lot more mainstream. Uh, like, gaming in general has become more mainstream over the years, which is, I mean, there are, there are naysayers, but I think that it's personally kind of nice, uh, because... Man, back when I was a kid and I played video games, I was just, you know, a, a little little girl who played video games like her brother who got her used to and into video games. Um, people made fun of me because apparently you're not allowed to be a girl who likes video games. At least back in the day, that used to be a problem for dudes. For some reason, I guess they're masculine masculinity felt a little threatened uh, sometimes. I, I wouldn't say that that was all dudes, obviously. Uh, I, do, I did have a lot of dude friends who were, you know, like, totally accepting, but, like, there were some people, there were a lot of people out there that were just completely rude about it. I remember way back in the day, um, playing Super Smash Brothers Melee 
And uh, like back when YouTube was kind of like still pretty fresh and people weren't really posting a whole lot of like a game videos and things like that, uh, I managed to have a rare event happen in Melee kind of early on in its life. Um, collectively, my family unlocked everything in Super Smash Bros. with Melee. And therefore, in the Poker Balls, Celebi could appear. Um, I think also, um, it's like a really, really low chance where you would get a random Celebi in a Poke Ball. And uh, it doesn't actually do anything on the stage if you just throw the Poke Ball, it just shows a Celebi. Like, you just see it come out. And, um, it was a very rare event that would happen, but, um, but I remember playing classic mode on Melee and then fighting Giga Bowser. And then there was one lone Pokeball that spawned, and so I threw it at Giga Bowser, and the Celebi popped out, and it was still when people didn't really believe that Giga Bowser existed, um, and didn't really know the criteria to get him to, to appear, but I guess you had to clear, um, you had to clear the, uh, classic mode within, like, a certain amount of time. There was, like, a time frame where if you got uh, to Bowser and actually, like, you know, finished him off, then, <laughs> that sounds bad, if you, like, actually, you knocked out Bowser in the allotted time frame, then you get Giga Bowser to appear, and people were still mystified by this, why were people getting Giga Bowser and other people weren't, and stuff, so I got a video of it, I was holding a camera with my feet, and, um, it was super awesome. I got that moment on camera, I got Celebi, I got Giga Bowser, and people were freaking out. The video blew up on YouTube. It, it just took off. But then, like, when people, like, found out that I was a girl, people became so mean and hurtful and said some really rude things on there that, um, I just, like, abandoned that account. I left the video up, but I abandoned the account. People said some really, really hurtful things. Um, you could have clips of music, graphics, etc. to represent the categories. Oh, wait, wait, wait. How cool would it, uh, would it be to have a show like the Oscars? Yeah, like clips of music, graphics, etc. to represent the categories. Oh, that would be so cool. Oh my gosh. I feel like the Oscars is pretty overblown. I don't really personally know people who, um are really like that into the Oscars. I mean, there might be a few people, um, there might be a few people, but like, I do think that there needs to be more stuff like that for other things. I agree. Um, but I did hear that like, at the Oscars, like some of the, the, the people there were kind of like bashing on like animation, like like animated movies, which is kind of sad because that's a that's a valid medium. Like the way that they were talking about it, it was just kind of like it was really rude, you know. Like I don't know, like like animated movies are still movies. It's still like an art, and you know, voice actors are still actors, and you know what I mean, like and. The people who work really hard to make the visuals and everything like that in an animated movie, you know, that just totally discredits them and their hard work. It's just so crazy to me that there are people out there that that just want to hate on it and bash it, you know what I mean? Like, and just discredit it for what it is. It's pretty frustrating. <laughs> In my own opinion, sorry guys, I just touched the mic with my arm. I'm definitely going to have to like kind of outline everything here. At least so I can make some hard edges. So even if I have to like work them a little bit more. It's just good to have. It's good to have. Let me make that a little bit. 
darker. I'm back permanently. Oh my gosh, permanently. Well, thank you so much for being here, Her. How have you been lately? Um, me? I've been pretty good. I've been really busy. <laughs> um, I feel like I don't really get a lot of time to just chill on my phone and, uh, you know, just kind of be on the internet lately. I used to a lot, lot more, but, um, but boy, I've been I've been keeping myself busy. That's pretty much it. Uh, I got my chickies. They are so awesome. I've got my daughter, and um, I've got my garden that we're trying to grow. And then we're also just trying to work on some other projects and things like that around the house. And, uh, man, it's just been wiping me out. But I'm so happy to be able to go into my workshop. I've been letting myself sleep a lot more lately too. That's part of it. Um, but I've been, yeah, I've definitely been keeping pretty busy myself and it's, it's been nice. I will say it's been very nice. Um, I broke my hard drive like last week by accident by stepping on it, but I did actually recently get the Torx screwdrivers to try to go ahead and fix it like you know myself <laughs> so i've kind of opened up the casing on it but i haven't really gotten to work on it uh that was pretty much as far as i got on the thing but i'd like to sit down and actually work on it uh yeah i guess enough about me how have you been hard i hope you've been well lately how's everything going are you back on the face space or are you like pretty much hanging up the hat on that i i remember you having difficulties with the uh, with the facebook as of late and uh, honestly i've been like giving it some serious thought and thinking about like being on twitter more um i'm just not really sure uh if i will like the people as much that i've built up around like built up a pretty pretty good uh, bunch of people on my Facebook where I actually really like their company and like you know their online company just feel like I've met a lot of really cool people over there and I'm not even sure if I can replicate that you know what I mean <laughs> uh, I haven't really been on there yeah uh, that makes sense. I've been on Twitter and Ophi's Discord server. Oh, yeah! Yeah, I haven't even really been on Discord. I've been, like, doing the bare minimum on Discord. It's kind of pathetic. Uh, <laughs> I'm banned on Facebook for another five days. Uh, hey, five days. That's not too bad. It's not too bad. I didn't realize that, uh, you had another five days, though. My goodness. Uh, yeah, so that Discord server, I saw that you had, um... Wait... That's why her name was... That's why her name was, uh, familiar to me. Gotcha. So that's Ophelia. Okay... Meet, um, meet Mama. <laughs> Yeah, I really gotta be more active on Discord. Uh, some people have been joining my Altia Underground Discord server, and uh, it's just really making me want to uh, get my um, get my butt in gear on that thing because I haven't really been doing that at all when I absolutely should. Um, because people are interested in my old keychains, and uh, it's really kind of a shame that I don't really have anything to show for it, you know what I mean? Like, I have all of the stuff in my workshop, people are joining the Discord server, and it's just telling me that people are still kind of like thinking about the Altia Studio thing I had going on, and, and uh, the, the keychains I was making, and means a lot to me. I feel like I'm really sleeping on that.
could be better. Uh, I'm the same, to be honest. Met a lot of really cool people on Facebook, but I hate the website. Yes, I really do hate the website, seriously, and I, I'm not a fan of Zuckerberg either. I'm not a fan of him and his character and, like, just him as a person and just his ideals and things like that just don't sit right with me. And uh, the way that he wants to co with the whole metaverse thing, it just doesn't sit right with me as well. There's just a lot. There's a lot. And it's, uh, it's, yeah, it's a bit much. It's kind of upsetting, honestly. <laughs> uh, looks like I'm getting a message from my husband. Let's see what's going on. Uh, he says I hope your live stream is going well. Aww. Keto Squared says that he hopes the live stream is going well. He's so sweet. Um, it is going well. I would like to message him back. Maybe as soon as I can get through some of this paint before it dries. Because I'm just going to go back to dry. Um, aww. It's so nice of him to check in. He's at work right now. And you know what? He's got, and I've got like another hour to go. Uh, I've been loving the Discord. I made so many friends on there lately, and today I got offered mod there. What? Oh, that's so nice. That's really cool. By the way, when she raided you, we were in the Discord virtual call, and everyone on the call was really impressed with your painting. Oh my gosh, that's so sweet, dude. I can't, I can't handle that. My heart's going to explode. You are so sweet, and like, oh my gosh. That means a lot to me, seriously. Gosh. Yeah, I, I gotta, I gotta be on there with you guys, chilling, chilling on the Discord. I gotta kinda get in with some, some more online friends, maybe get away from Facebook too, cause, oh my gosh, like, I go on there, and it's good for, like, just quickly sharing things. Which I guess I could do, like, on Twitter, but I don't know how well that kind of, like, represents my stuff, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know. I don't know how to, I don't, I don't know. I'll share all those birds, memes, and art, you know? Like, I have such a good time sharing stuff on Facebook and, like, just piecing out for a little bit and then coming back and, like, you know, and, and I've got, like, some really cool people on there that are super mega supportive. I adore everybody that's on there, but yeah, like, seriously, the website, uh, is a problem. <laughs> um, we can thank the Zuck for that, but oh my gosh, that means so much to me. I really gotta get on Discord more. I've never done a, uh, like a, like a chat or a call, like a call, Discord call, with, like, you know, the online homies before. I've never done that. I've done that with like, I think a couple people. Uh, Noel and some of his buddies. I get so shy about that. <laughs> Honestly, everyone in the den is just so nice and kind and helpful too. Oh, that's great. Voice call. We could def do that. I'd love to chat with you. Oh, that'd be so cool. Yeah, I'd be down. I'd be down. Maybe we can play some games and stuff while we do it, or maybe we can uh, chat and watch some Twitch and support the homies. Yeah, I'm all about that. Now, the only the only thing for me is just like getting the time to do it. Like, getting the time to do this is like a struggle. <laughs> it's a true struggle for me. I just myself busy I guess which is it's my own fault but I'm and I'm happy to be busy but yeah I feel like I'm kind of lacking running falling behind on things I got an Etsy message today asking about um like my keychains and stuff like that and like I had nearly forgotten for I think a couple of hours I saw the message come through then some stuff was going down with my daughter. She was, I don't remember what she was doing. She was playing outside. I think she like hurt herself or fell or something. And 
she called me over and so I had to stop what I was doing and then a few hours later I remembered I had the Etsy message and Etsy times you on getting back to people so I was just like oh shoot <laughs> so I replied to them late and oh my gosh everything is just random right now like I don't know I just I, I don't have like chunks of time where I can just sit down and like I, I got to play that, I got to play a little bit of Kirby um, while my husband was here, he took a mini vacation, which was very, very nice, and we just kind of had like a staycation sort of thing here, which was so much fun, and I got to play a little bit of Kirby. What else happened? Yeah, we got to play some Kirby, and uh, I got a bit further from when I live streamed, but I still never really got to sit down and actually like play the game more uh, than that for like up until just a couple days ago. But that was good though because I actually did get to play quite a bit, and I did get kind of a lot further. I got up to. I got up to the DDD fight, the the wild beast DDD or whatever, the beast tamer, whatever he is, <laughs> and uh, I got 200% that as well as the previous world, so all of that stuff is 100% so I did do the no damage run with the Clara line and the no damage run with DDD as well. And um, I'm on the desert road, which looks a heck of a lot like Arizona. <laughs> um, I think every day this week, I've been on Discord call with people off stream, just playing games and chatting. It's been a vibe. Ooh, wow. That's so much fun. Just, just chilling with the homies online, man. That's what it's all about. That's really silly for Etsy to do a time limit to reply. So it's not necessarily a time limit, but they do time you. So, so it's like you can, you can reply anytime you want, really. However, if you do reply anytime you want, just know that Etsy is going to score you based on that. So if you reply quick within one hour, within a single hour, and let me tell you, people do message you in the middle of the night. So that kind of sucks if you're a busy shop. You really need to be able to be available around the clock. Um, yeah, so, so basically if you reply within the hour uh, consistently, you get a cool seller badge that basically says replies fast. Um, if you have like a one-off here and there, they'll kind of bug you with like little notifications on your dashboard to say, hey, you need to reply kind of speedy or you've been missing the boat on this. Um, and then if you continue to not reply within like the hour, then you can lose your badge. Um, and also, it hurts your rankings in search. So if someone searches your shop based on like keywords and things like that, or searches for your items and uh, like you you would think that your items would appear like a little higher in the search results, you just, you rank lower. There's an algorithm on Etsy, just like there's an algorithm on social media. So, yeah, you'll, you'll kind of lose out on some of the visibility because you don't reply within an hour is what they ask for. And that's ridiculous. I can't tell you how many times I've been messaged in the middle of the night um, on Etsy, like during the holiday season. It looks like my camera went out. Uh, yeah, there goes my camera. Let's see what I can do. Hold on. I wonder if I can do this quick. Uh, uh, um. I wonder if I can actually get it on quick enough so that I don't have to worry about, like, putting everything on the break screen, because that would be super ideal. It's been, like, pretty snappy, um, considering as far as connecting goes, but, uh, not every single time. Let's see what happens. Let's see. Alright, so it connected to the camera. 
the app did. The app connected to the camera. Then I used the app to connect to the network. Then I connect it to my server on my computer. And then it usually goes live right after that. Usually it picks right up. All right, let's continue. Go live. Looks like it's working. Oh wow, that was a snappy reconnect. There we go. Hello, Space Daddy Gangsta. I hope you're doing great. So it says that it's connected. Now I do kind of have to refresh the technical difficulties screen because sometimes it doesn't switch over, which is, it's fine. It's all right. Let's see here. Yep, we're good. Woohoo, we're back on. Uh, wow, we connected like in record time that time. I didn't want to have to take a break and run ads or anything like that. That's kind of annoying, right? Like, I don't want to have to deal with all that. Yeah, sweet, right? Oh my gosh, Space Daddy, it's good to see ya. I hope you're doing well. It's been a bit since I've really talked to you or anybody. It's been a bit since I've streamed. <laughs> I've, uh, yeah, I've been kind of offline a bit lately. But I miss people, and I miss folks, and I miss the greatest people on Twitch and Facebook all that fun stuff. Yeah, I, I, I'm also getting used to this chest cam thing that I'm using right now. Um, I'm not terribly good at it yet, but I'll get there. I'll get there. It just takes practice. This is my first session using it, so I'll get better. I think so. Anyway. doing the, the big well <laughs> glad to see you're doing the best art on twitch oh my gosh you're so sweet dude i'm mega flattered you're the sweetest ever um i miss these streams you're so sweet hard oh my gosh you guys are awesome super mega supportive i am um, i'm completely winging it with like literally everything and so it means a lot to me when you guys have really nice things to say because I'm just really trying to, really just trying to, I don't know, like, figure out what direction I'm taking this painting. And, uh, like, I have this idea in my head, like, vaguely what I want to do with it. But, like, I don't know. I just, uh, I, I guess it's coming along, but I've made so many changes and adjustments. So, on my Facebook page, you might notice that like underneath like in my featured selection of things on my Facebook page I have like a for every painting that I've done on live stream after every session I grab a picture and then I put it into like this reel like a slideshow basically of all of the different sessions that I have worked on the paintings and they're all categorized by each painting but you'll notice that this painting has a lot of provisions, kind of like my Guardian of the Sword. It looked, Guardian of the Sword honestly looked horrendous for the longest time. I didn't know where I was going with it. I couldn't figure it out. This one also has had a lot of changes. Remember when he had whiskers? I changed that. I took them away. And then I added some more horns and then I like lightened this up and then I changed the way that his ice looks. I never know what direction I'm going with these things. <laughs> you guys say such sweet things though. It makes me feel like, ah, whatever. People support whatever I do. But I'm, I'm still trying to like, you know, I don't know. I'm still trying to make it look okay, but it's fumbling. I fumble the whole way. Constant fumbling. Uh, I just, I never know what to do <laughs> with these. Um, you're honestly so underrated, to be honest. That's why, though I'd ask Ophi to raid you. Oh, that's why you asked, you thought I'd ask, I thought I'd ask Ophi to raid you after we finished the stream. That is so sweet. Oh my gosh. I've been stumbling all over my words today. I don't know why. Um, thank you so, so much, Harv. You're so sweet. 
She really liked to be. Oh my gosh, you guys are so, so sweet. I can't take it. My heart is melting. My heart is melting. You guys are so sweet, seriously. I have the best online friends ever, the most supportive people on the internet. On the interwebs. Right here. And it's just awesome. I have to like kind of visualize what it would be like to have like the the ice tips from like the other side of his chest plates to come up like that. So I have to kind of figure out where where those are gonna go. Okay, let me just try to orient the camera a little bit. There we go. There we go. Oh man, I do love this soundtrack. You guys recognize this? My favorite video game composer is Sukasa Toeda. I don't know if I'm pronouncing his name right or if I'm butchering it, but dude, he makes wicked jams. Totally awesome. <laughs> Gotta help the homies. Yeah, I mean, I really appreciate you. Gosh, it means so, so much to me. You guys are awesome, seriously. I gotta be online more. I really enjoy sharing things on Facebook. But yeah, I kinda, kinda wanna get away from Facebook a little bit. <laughs> it's good for like posting my progress and the things that I'm doing and trying to keep updated and then trying to stay up to date with what my friends are doing and stuff. I do like Facebook for that stuff, but it's fun to play in the book. <laughs> in particular, just the Zuck. The Zuck is the problem. Like 99% of the problem. <laughs> somewhere. I want to say it's from a Kirby game, but I'm not sure. No, this is from Pokemon Battle Revolution. That's a Pokemon game. They should have had Tsukasa just do the entire like main game soundtrack. All of it. They should have just converted over and just hired Tsukasa to do everything. Because, oh my gosh, his, his music is just, it's way better than the stuff that I, I personally think is way better than the stuff that the main games have had ever, <laughs> like probably. <laughs> he did the soundtrack for Pokemon Coliseum and Gale of Darkness, and he also did the Pokemon Shuffle soundtrack, and... He also did Pokemon Battle Revolution, which is what we're listening to right now. Um, I don't really know what else. I think that there might have been something else, but I can't. Uh, <laughs> is it really? Yes, it is. I would not have guessed that. Uh, bro, I haven't played that game for ages. Yeah, this one is, uh, I believe it's Sunset Coliseum. This is the one, I think, where you have to have the rental Pokemon where you're forced to do rentals you can't bring in your own, which is, like, I just touched the camera with my hand. <laughs> That's so funny. Um, it'd be so cool if you did your art pieces and made a little hollow trading cards out of them for sale. Oh my gosh. Uh, I feel like it'd be such a hot seller. Ooh. Ooh. Holographic trading cards. 
I would want that, seriously. Actually, it's been my dream to be able to, like, to, like, do trading cards. And honestly, I'm a total nerd for holographic. I'm sure you guys know that. And if you didn't know that, then you know it now. Uh, but yeah, like, I'm totally down for literally all of that, what you just said. Uh, one of these days, it would be really, really cool to have, like, to have, like, trading cards, like, art trading cards. And then for the ones with the, like, I like what Pokemon does with some of their, their cards, their collector cards, right? Because, because, like, most of the art is a landscape orientation, but for the ones that are portrait orientation, which is vertical, those ones, they do full art cards. So it's like, you have, like, if I had Glimmering Seabed, you would have the art for that, and then you'd have the text that's just overlaying that, but not super intrusive on the artwork. Which, I was thinking about it to myself, I'm like, I don't do all landscape orientation artworks, but I feel like that would be a really good workaround for that. That would be pretty neat. I would love to do that, seriously. <laughs> um, oh my gosh. She could put the put cut a bit of uh, put a bit of the lore about the dragon on it. Yeah, like have the names and lore and have Sunla Studio packs of art cards. Ooh, we need full art embossed Sunla ones. Oh my gosh, I would support the absolute fluff out of this, dude. I just I seriously have to have a collection of artwork going, which I don't really have a really huge collection yet. But when I do have like a pretty amount of things. I would love the heck out of making trading cards. It would be the coolest. I would be so happy to do that seriously. Um, but yeah, I do need to build up my, my portfolio quite a bit before I can think about doing that because otherwise there's going to be a lot of repeats. Uh, <laughs> you know what I mean? But the lore, oh, oh gosh, I love writing lore for these things. Um, but yeah, I would I would love to do that seriously. That that is such a fun idea. I'm totally down. Like I I've thought about it a lot too. I actually had um, a list somewhere on my old phone where I was thinking about like doing specific artworks for dragons and then writing the lore for the dragons and then also I was going to call it. Um, uh, Sunla's, uh, Dragonic, I can't remember what it was, it wasn't the word Legion, it was, I can't remember, there was, there was definitely something that I was actually already thinking of that I wrote, but it was a few years ago, but now that I'm actually making the artwork, well, I mean, it's, it's pretty much bound to happen, all I need is the funding and the collection of artwork that I've actually completed. It would need to happen first before I could even think of, before I could even think of like actually getting it printed because like imagine if I like, I don't know, borrowed money or something and like did it and like just like pretty much everything else that I do like swapped a little bit. I don't know, like it, it takes time. Like I. I put so much money into the, the pins and stuff, and it's like, I think I got an order of 50, and uh, that that costed quite a bit of money. That was a lot for me to invest, but I haven't really sold a lot of them. Like, I don't know. I don't think I've even sold half, and it's been a couple of years. So it's like, I don't know, things just don't really, don't really pan out the way that you plan, usually. When you make those types of investments, I think that if I have enough money, if I do a lot of different investments, then it'll return a lot better, if that makes sense. I could, you know, have more items in my shop, and then maybe, like, I don't know, drive more traffic, and then in turn, potentially make more sales to fund more projects. I'll get there. It'll take time. It really will. <laughs> it would cost a lot. I, I was looking at, um, I was looking at, uh, card um, manufacturers that I could potentially purchase from and there are some out there that I was uh, 
I was I was looking at. I was uh, looking around, but yeah, I, I don't have the money. <laughs> oh my gosh! Hold on, what? Uh oh, that's what it was. Um, Sunla's Dragonic Regiment is what I called it. Um, and that was kind of my kind of my thoughts on that one. Take my whole ass bank account, please. I'll donate my house for Sunla cards. No, stop. <laughs> I will adopt and sell children for Sunla card stuff. No, 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 we're not going there. Stop. The will sell these children for Sunla cards. Ah. No, I don't condone the words of my followers. <laughs> Disclosure. <laughs> you guys are so funny. Oh my gosh. Ridiculous. Ridiculous. Oh my gosh. Um. I'd really, really love to make those cards, seriously. I would love, and I would, like, if I made it into a game, that would be really cool, but I would need help with that. Like, I don't, I don't know how to write a trading card game, but I feel like having the, like, actual functionality of the cards would be really cool, but I'm not really sure, like, how to go about writing out a game or like actually coming up with the rules and stuff like that and you know what it it's kind of difficult too because I'm never a fan of like actually playing these types of games you know what I mean like which is kind of kind of ridiculous <laughs> um, I don't like I I'm not good <laughs> I'm not good at like tabletop games and I'm not good at um, trading card games, so I just, I don't play them. I like to collect pretty things, though, so, you know. I'm a big fan of, like, Pokemon cards and, like, the holographic stuff. I always have been a total nerd for that stuff. Um, but yeah, like, writing out a game, it's not, it's not something that's in my list of capabilities at all, like, whatsoever. You kind of have to be, like, a little bit of, like, a consumer of those types of things in order to really, like, have the eye for it and the understanding for it, in my opinion, at least. Um, you know, I definitely think, definitely think it would be helpful, mighty helpful. I don't know how much of that you can see. Oh, it looks like the camera's pretty good. It stays on. <laughs> it does stay, so that's important. I'm not used to this, um, test cam. It's definitely taking me some getting used to. And I will. I will. Oh, you know what? I had this crazy idea today, though. You know how I found all that clay on my parapete? So much clay. So much just wild clay. Just... We're on top of a bunch of clay, man. We're on top of so much clay. But, um... I'm super excited about it because uh, we're actually gearing up to do a pretty big project. Because of it. And I'm really excited. We actually invested in a little something, and my husband's on board with it. He's like, it's so nice that he's on board with it, because like he's, he's definitely, he's definitely wanting to do this too. Uh, so, so I just kind of cast it out there, threw it out there, you know. We can process that clay and turn it into actual, like, usable air dry clay, like, professional grade. Because the stuff that we got, that we have out there, even just completely no temper, nothing added, it's super nice. Are you gonna make a metal print on your store? I'd love to hang this AC Icy Boy on my wall. Oh, yes! Absolutely! I love what you're doing with the clay! Thank you! Do it. Yes. So, uh, yeah, so I will. I will be making a metal plate print of this Icy Boy. I, uh, I actually have to order more prints of, um, Glimmering Seabed right now. I'm, I'm pretty low on prints for that one, uh, but I would love to do 
one for this because I feel like it's make uh oh I just bumped the whole mic I'm sorry you guys <laughs> um I feel like this would make a pretty decent metal plate print once I finish it up anyways um yeah I'm really excited about that but yeah the clay so I did find and and thank you by the way Farv thank you so so much for your kind words like. I, I know I didn't say it, I'm like really kind of a little bit tired, and a little ditzy, and kind of hungry right now. <laughs> but, um, so I'm not, I'm not all here mentally, I'm definitely trying. But, uh, what was I going to say? Uh, oh yeah. So, so I just wanted to say, like, thanks so much for, for supporting me and actually, like, you know, wanting to get one of the metal plate prints. I, I, I love the metal. And I just really want an excuse to make more of them, if that makes sense. So hearing that you want to get it, it, it means a lot to me. So thank you so, so much. Um, the, the clay, I was having a super crazy idea. Uh, and I'm going to share it with you right now. Um, this is kind of kind of out there. But yeah, like we want to uh, we want to add temper to it, and we want to refine it so that we can turn it into clay. We have the poly bags for it, um, and we're going to actually be able to like turn it into something that I can maybe add to my shop, and then I can actually sell the clay, right? Like actual Arizona clay that I have here, and it's just it's good quality stuff, even just the stuff that's. Um, even just the stuff that's straight out of the ground, nothing added to it. So I'm really hoping that I can make it into something that can be good quality, but I will have to just got to do my homework. I'm going to like join some, some, uh, you know, sculptors and pottery groups and things like that. Um, just specifically looking for some kind of advice and, um, you know, just the ins and outs and just to kind of understand what sculptors are really looking for because uh, without being a sculptor it's kind of difficult for me to discern these types of things you know what I mean like I I want to know the quality that I'd be putting out there and have something some points of reference so that would be really good I have to do my research and I also want to use it for some big projects of my own because we have so much of it like it's literally a mountain of clay um, so I have like an idea to make something kind of like super crazy and big um, <laughs> and you guys will see eventually once I get there what I'm going to make and I, I might even be able to live stream the process too that would be ideal uh, but yeah like I'm super excited about it super excited <laughs> oh wow I'm sure Space Daddy Gangsta will agree with me, but we love a clay sculptor making scream, scream, derp, <laughs> stream. I would love to do one, seriously. I've got to, like, kind of vary up my streams a little bit. I have projects and things I need to do. Yes! <laughs> it's like $80 here, and to be honest, it's worth every cent. Oh my gosh, $80 over there. Wow. Um, that is so, so sweet. Thank you so much. Uh, oh, right, because of that international shipping. Oh, ugh. Uh, yeah, so international shipping is kind of kind of a challenge. Um, and it costs a lot <laughs> to do. Um, and it, that's no fun. And also the conversions, of course, but like, oh my gosh. Like, uh... Uh, I wish I, I wish that it was cheaper to ship things in particular, especially just international things. Um, but yeah, like, yeah. Oh man, that's a lot, eighty dollars. Yeah, but I really, really appreciate you. I try to keep my prices as fair and as low as I can handle. <laughs> and sometimes it's just not that possible to keep them low because I do have to go through like other companies who price their things the way that they do and for their reasons and it's like yeah yeah that's kind of unfun a little bit that part is um but i really appreciate the support seriously that means a lot to me you guys say such sweet things 
Oh my gosh, the play idea? I have, um, an idea for... I have to tell you what it is. Alright, I'm gonna tell you what my idea is with the natural play that I want to do. I want to make a dragon mirror. Now this sounds like totally wacky. <laughs> it sounds wacky, but I have it in my head like this, you see. I have something called a mirror coat spray, and it's like a spray paint. So if you have a superb, like, nice and, like, smooth and just completely straight, um, surface, like, uh, like, um, let me think like an acrylic sheet or something, or plexiglass that's just straight and there's no like impurities and things on it, you can take this mirror coat spray and uh, you can spray it on the back side. And then when you flip it, it's a mirror. It's straight up just a mirror. So here's my thoughts. If I took some clay, and I created the border or the outside of a mirror, like, like I don't know, an oval shape or just kind of like a natural shape and, and that kind of have like some things like, I kind of want to do like a natural looking shape and just have some things um, kind of sitting in it or like just, you know, dragons coming from inside the mirror. It, it's hard to explain. But uh, I want to have like the, the outside clay and then I want to be able to pour resin into it and fill up that space on a nice flat surface and the flat surface would have to be silicone. It'd have to be perfectly flat um, and I could pour like a nice resin sheet on it. Uh, just, just a nice layer and just kind of get it coated from like side to side to be able to have that inside the, the perimeter of the mirror and flip it and then do the, the mirror coat spray and then to be able to decorate it and make it into like this cool like custom dragon mirror. I mean, what do you guys think of that? It's kind of an idea that I have but I'm not really sure exactly how, how well that's gonna go. <laughs> I still really want to do a painting tutorial stream with you. Oh yeah! We gotta do that! Uh, I just gotta find time that works for both of us since we're so busy. Yeah, for sure. We really gotta find time that uh, lines up because that would be so, so cool. I was thinking about that the other day and uh, something interrupted my thoughts, but, um, but yeah, it would be really cool to do that. Oh my gosh. Uh, <laughs> I wanna make it Pokemon themed and do some giveaways and stuff, be it similar base. Oh my gosh, you're so sweet. Oh, you're so, so sweet. And I'm itching to do some artwork, uh, like Pokemon stuff. We'll definitely get up at like 4 a.m. to watch you guys. Oh my gosh, you're so sweet, Harp. Uh, Y'all need to draw an Absol for me so I can learn to draw. Oh, I would love that. Oh geez, such a crazy idea, I love it. <laughs> that sounds cool. <laughs> Cool, it's free. Thank you, thank you guys. Uh, it'd be so fun. Oh my gosh, Space Daddy, that sounds like a really fun stream. And an Absol, that's a challenge. I've never drawn an Absol before, so it would be really nice to do that. I suppose I could do a little bit of like practice sketches or something, because I've never drawn an Absol before. <laughs> Which sounds crazy, I've drawn so many Pokemon before. Uh, but Apple, for some reason, I just haven't, even though I like it as a Pokemon, I actually like it, but I've never drawn it, so, so we'll see. I'll definitely, um, definitely keep you posted there. I'll probably do some sketches in a few days here and then upload them. You guys can see that, see what you think. Um, just so I can kind of understand the anatomy of it. Like, I can do, like, different poses and stuff, but, like, first we need to understand, like, it's kind of, kind of, like, vaguely understand its anatomy. <laughs> That's pretty much it. Um, yeah, that'd be so fun. Oh my gosh. And yeah, the mirror idea. Thank you guys. Uh, I just, yeah, I just had that like total fever dream the other day, yesterday or today. I don't know. My days blend together. Um, anyway, I was just, you know, having these, these like daydreams that are just kind of like 
wacky and all I do is think about like really whimsical things all the time that like my brain is occupied with like colors and shapes and stuff like that. I'm daydreaming like all the time pretty much. And it was just one of the things that came to mind and honestly that one really struck me with like that was just like an epiphany. I was like ah I can do something with this with the clay in particular and I'm just like I don't know if it's gonna work but I'll never know if I don't try right like I really have to apply myself or else it's never gonna work so uh, so yeah I mean you just gotta throw yourself out there into these projects and just hope right that's just how it goes just uh, hope for the best Fading. Maybe a little bit of coffee will re up my uh, my ability to think. A little bit of coffee. Oh, I love coffee. I do have night coffee. If you do the clay mirror thing, um, what if you did layered resin so it kind of popped out a bit? Could be really wild looking. That's actually something. Yes, Space Daddy, you're actually totally on to. You're on to me. You're on to me. So I was actually thinking about doing that. I also wanted to do some, um, you, have you ever seen those things that people do where they'll have like a bowl or something uh, with like a fish or something in it or even just like one of those uh, little Chinese dragons. They'll have a bowl and they'll do a layer of resin and then like they'll build this dragon that's dimensional or a fish that's dimensional. Uh, using like paint, they'll like do a layer, paint it, and then do another thin layer, and then paint that, and like, and then, and then once it's all built up, it looks like a dimensional sort of thing. I was thinking about doing something like that, but I do need to kind of like create a little bit of a blueprint for those if I'm going to make multiple, so that I can kind of have an understanding of like where on the plane so you have to think about it like a 3D shape on a 2D plane. And you have to think of it in slices. My jam, yes! This one's above the clouds, I think, Kirby. I love this song. Yeah, so the, the you can also do that with the mirror thing too and have it like pop out a little bit and have it in the foreground or have something in the foreground. Uh, absolutely. Resin is so fun to work with. Like, you are not limited to... Not limited by much, honestly. Uh, if I want to do the, the mirror thing, I definitely need to invest in, like, a whole ton of resin. Like, a lot. <laughs> I love this soundtrack. This one's the crystal shards above the clouds. I think it was like named Butterfields. And I think this track was named Butterfield and Kirby Superstar. And I think that they changed it to Above the Clouds for Kirby and the Crystal Shards. <laughs> I love working with resin. I personally want to do some little Pokemon terrarium soon with mini fish tanks and Pokemon cards and resin and dye. Oh, that sounds so much fun. What? <laughs> that sounds great. Dude, I just don't know exactly how I want to do it yet. Wow. That would be so cool. Yeah, it's, uh, it sounds like it's time for you to visit the craft store space, Daddy. Sounds like you need to go, like, spend some money on some craft store stuff. And then, uh, dude, you will have ideas out the wazoo, but that sounds so much fun. You will. Once you, once you see the stuff in hand, or once you go to a craft store, but you really gotta, like, tell yourself that you're actually gonna do it, and, like, like actually set reminders and stuff because like it's so easy to buy supplies and not use them. Um, I'm just telling you from like experience like what happens. 
um, to people, including myself, where you buy these things. Of course, I have a lot of things on the back burner that I absolutely am going to use, but it is taking me some time to actually get to use them. Um, and I have used them before, and I just need to get, like, time to do it again, if that makes sense. That's all it really is. There. Yeah, get some like icy boy ice over here. Icy boy ice. So much ice. need to darken up the edges on that a little bit. So let's go ahead and make some violet. I'm going to use a little bit of that. I'm going to go ahead and use some cobalt and some ultramarine. And I get into the pockets because uh, if you notice, everything's like all dried up. <laughs> I want to do all the crafts! I agree. I agree. Trust me. I I'm bad in a craft store. I I love Hobby Lobby. They in general have really really good prices. They used to have this coupon that was a 40% off coupon and uh, it was extremely generous, but they took that away, I think. Um, I haven't been there since, which is silly. Um, but they used to have that, you would get a weekly 40% off coupon, like every single week. And uh, the coupon was for one item, like it's valid, only for one item. And then uh, they started adding restrictions to it, so you couldn't like, continue to, <laughs> you couldn't like, continue to use it on some of the higher like, end products, and the better products. like. I used to use it on my resin and get a really smoking deal on my resin, right? I'd get like 40% off the $20 resin, right? That was good. But uh, they did away with that. They made it so that it was restricted and could only be used for like specific items. Uh, and then I think they did away with it completely. <laughs> Uh, I've been so interested in 3D stuff lately, like Blender, mainly backgrounds for my streams. Ooh, that sounds really cool. Blender, have you been working on, on stuff in Blender? The resin stuff sounds like 3D printing, but manually. Uh, maybe you could use Blender to make a blueprint somehow. Yeah, that's actually a really good idea, Harv. Um... If there's some way, I just can't think of how to do it. What you would essentially have to do is... I might actually have to do a lot of the work manually. Like, mentally, manually. Um, so, because you're doing it in layers and they're flat layers, you do like four or five layers. You just have to mentally think of um, what goes on what layer, um, and I would actually have to plot it out. It shouldn't be too terribly hard, just give me, uh, like, a piece of paper and probably an hour or so to plot out the design. Like, it shouldn't be too terribly hard to come up with the design. Um, I might need more time when it comes to, like, colors and things like that and coordinating that piece. But, like, just to plot it out and have, like, a blueprint ready so that I can, like, make multiple of these things that are handmade, of course. But having a blueprint, dude, you, you need that. You absolutely need that uh, in order to make a bunch of them, right? Because it would be so easy to mess up. So you'd say, this is what layer one looks like. This is what layer two looks like. This is what layer three looks like. And this is what layer four looks like. And if you miss any of those steps, you will mess up the thing, right? Like, so you have to have a step-by-step. -step. You can't just wing it for every one of them. Um, so I'm just thinking, like, I'll probably, I know that, like, they make stickers I've seen, like, on AliExpress I've been advertised to, like, stickers for goldfish ones, I think. Um, so that just tells me that it's like, 
it's pretty simple. I can study the stickers so I can kind of have like a good understanding of what goes on what layer, how it layers on, and then, uh, you know, just kind of design my own dragon with a few, a few layers to work with. I think that would be awesome. And then I can sculpt the little bowls that they sit in and have them like sitting in water, you know? I think that would be really fun. Um, yeah, I want to make a little alleyway with some dumpsters, etc. because I'm the raccoon man now. Oh my gosh, that would be great! Dude, that's great! I want to see like a 3D like little alleyway with some dumpsters. Oh my gosh! Oh, that's great! Yes. Blender is good for a lot of things, so I have heard from some of the cool art YouTubers that I occasionally watch, um, like Bobby Chu. Uh, they would talk about Blender for making like 3D kind of mock-up paintings and things like that, that look like a, a 2D painting, but it's actually three-dimensional and you can like move it around even just a little bit, the point of view. Dude, there's so many possibilities with Blender, seriously. There's a lot of stuff you can do. Stuff that I want to get into eventually, too. There's just not enough time in the day, you know? Like, I, there's so many things I want to try. It is 12.47, and I feel like I might have heard my husband. Maybe he's gotten home. I'm not really sure. Um, but, oh shoot, you guys, I actually do have to take a quick break. I will be right back. I realized that I left something in the warmer that I, <laughs> I need to take a break and get it out of the warmer really quick. I'll be back, you guys. Give me five minutes.
took me a while to remember what theme we were on. <laughs> I'm back. Hey, everybody. I was, like, looking around at the themes, and I'm like, I'm pretty sure we were on the chill theme, which makes sense for this painting. It's actually quite nice um, how it works out. But, yes. Okay, so I got the thing out of the, the warmer. <laughs> And uh, everything was all good, everything's A-OK. -okay. I was panicked for a second there because I thought it was like too long in there, but no, actually everything's fine. So thank goodness, oh my gosh, <laughs> I was panicked for a moment there. Uh, let's see. Uh, I want to make little alleys and dumpsters. And that way you can make different angles too for different scenes. Oh, that'd be nice, you're right. Uh, I have a few 3D printers, one of them is resin. Basically it's the same concept, but more tedious, yes. Right. Yeah, so like, uh, I imagine the painting is probably a little bit more tedious. Um, but, yeah, so much fun. So much fun. Resin printer, you were telling me about that before Space Daddy, you were telling me about your resin printer, it just seems like such a cool concept. I turned off the hand cam. Don't mind me. <laughs> I think, I think, I think, I think that the emotes should be able to kind of do like the emote explode thing. So we're going to do a few sunless breach things and see if they do. Okay, good. I just want to make sure that the emote thing in the corner still works because I did have a time where it just, like randomly stopped working. <laughs> Um, and yeah, you know, it's just good to check those things once in a while, because you'll never know. Besides, I do like to use, uh, my Sunless Grimch. <laughs> my, my broody boy. My Brewster. Broody Brewster. It's almost, like, time to, to end the stream, actually. Guys, do you know of anyone who might want to raid over to. If you have anybody in mind, that's awesome. We should um, check it out. And if not, don't stress. Like, I'm sure I can surprise somebody with our raid. I'm sure it would be a good time. A jolly good time. I need to kind of like sharpen up some of these details. I need to kind of like angle the camera. Or is the camera just right to kind of get these angles? Um, it's pretty challenging. Get it oriented just right, but I feel like you can get those really nice close up shots. Uh, I really want a 3D printer. They look cool as heck. Yes, I agree. Oh my gosh, I would love to get a, a 3D printer. Yes, I would. It's definitely not the first thing on my agenda just because I'm kind of like a little bit low in the menace. But it would be a really nice thing to have. Yes, it would. The 3D printers, there's a thing that I don't like about 3D printed stuff, um, in particular. Um, now I'm sure that this is something that can definitely be alleviated through just like hand working something, but it's that coily look, that look that has that texture where it's like the, the ridges on everything and that plasticky, ridgy feeling. I'm not a big fan of that. Um, and I almost kind of just want to take like a like a sander or something and just kind of like sand it down with like a like an electric type of buffer machine. Just like sand it down so that it's nice and smooth because it sort of bugs me a little bit, those ridges on the 3D printed stuff. Um, and a lot of people don't bother to really paint their stuff, but I feel like um, it would just be so much more like, I don't know, like figures and things like that would just look nicer if they were just, just a little bit of that, a little bit of extra love would probably go a long way, you know what I mean? 
little little extra working on. I kind of actually want to continue to use some of these darks here. I think it would be important to continue on kind of like creating some outlines and stuff like that. I got a little sidetracked and tried to work on something else and realized maybe I should maybe I should just continue what I was doing. Instead of being ADHD and trying to do something else every two seconds, <laughs> I'll mix up a paint and then abandon it because I start working on something else. <laughs> ah, predictable Sunla. So predictable. Sort of almost wanna like, Yeah. Just kinda like make that a little bit darker. A little bit darker right there. <laughs> uh, uh, I don't have anyone to be honest. Oh, have anyone to read? Yes. Yeah, you're right. Uh, you can definitely sand and smooth it. Relatable. Yeah, constantly changing tasks. Yes, it's a it's a curse. <laughs> it's a fun little curse. My brain is impish and it just likes to go wherever it wants and do whatever it wants at that time, which changes just constantly, periodically, it never stops, you know? I, that's the thing, it's like some of this painting does require some, some form of organization and sometimes it's just not there, like, at all. Alright, so here's our progress for the night. Um, I don't have a preview. I should start doing that though, shouldn't I? I should start like adding like a little preview, like this is what the last session looked like sort of thing. Um, that would be great. Alright you guys, well thank you so so much for tuning in. I guess we can go check out and see like what raiders, or what people, bleh, what people we can raid too. We would be the raiders, right? What the raiders want. Let's go find out. Let us find out. I'm going to go ahead and stow away all my paintbrushes that desperately need to be cleaned. Um, and I'm just going to go ahead and put my palette on, like, right on the floor there where I don't have to worry about it. <laughs> bumping into stuff. Um, let's check Twitch. Let's see who is on that I want to watch. Oh, boy. Um, I did... <laughs> oh my gosh, there's so many people on right now. That's actually really good, but also it's really hard to choose. Oh, wow. I, I like to raid to po po Pokiri Mio uh, kind of often, but I feel like I have raided Poku kind of too frequently, and you know, uh, they're really, really cool, and their art is really fantastic. Uh, they have a ton of viewers though, and I feel like maybe we can like kind of lend some viewers to some of the people who maybe need some more. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and say maybe we should go visit Cubby Panda One again. Now, let me tell you. Uh, so they are. He's really nice and really kind. Uh, his sense of humor is a little bit like on the toilety side, which is super silly and super like. So just want you guys to be totally, totally ready for that. Um, but yeah, he's totally nice and um, LGBTQ and super cool. So we're gonna go ahead and I think we should rate Cubby Panda one. What do you guys think? Yo yo yo! We're gonna rate Cubby. I'm gonna go ahead and raid them. Yeah! Poop jokes, that's right. Lots of toilet humor. Toilet humor, sewage humor, farts, all that fun stuff. Uh, <laughs> so, you know. <laughs> just know what we're getting into before we go there. Um, but yeah, I just want I just want to show some of my support back to him because he's pretty cool and chill and uh, he's a friend of Biggie Breweries, so I just figure, you know, kind of within the community of people that, you know, that are just really, I don't know, awesome and chill on Twitch that I, I personally enjoy. Um, yeah. 
All right, you guys, let's go ahead and raid Cubby. And uh, <laughs> I love humor, that's stupid, right? Yeah, me too, me too. I'm kind of the same way. Uh, I have an appreciation for like dad jokes and stuff like that. It's just, yeah, it's all good with me. I hope it's good with you guys too. All right, you guys, I'll see you over on the other side. Good night. Bye. Thank you for your support.